Well, while the world's attention was clearly focused and caught up in West Asia, Russia made swift progress in the other war. If you're thinking Ukraine, you're right. This week, Russia told this world that there is no stalemate in Ukraine. This message was sent both by word and action. Нет, он не зашел в тупик. Россия последовательно продолжает проведение специальной военной операции. Все цели, которые ставили, должны быть выполнены. Вот. А киевскому режиму, собственно, уже давно нужно было понять, что даже говорить о каких-то перспективах победы киевского режима на поле боя, это абсурдно. Это абсурдно. Чем раньше киевский режим для себя это... This week, Russia carried out what's being called its biggest artillery attack this year. Ukraine's interior minister, Ihor Klimenko, tweeted that in 24 hours, Russia shelled 118 settlements in 10 regions. He added, and I quote, This is the highest number of cities and villages that have come under attack since the start of the year. At least one person died in Kharkiv. Kherson too reported a death. An oil refinery was hit in the industrial city of Kremenchuk. Reports say that it took several hours and more than a hundred firefighters to put out the fire. A Russian drone also hit the city of Nikopol. 59-year-old woman was killed. At least four others were injured. Ukraine said that 10 of its 27 regions have come under attack. Avdika has become a flashpoint in particular. It is a town in the eastern Donetsk. Here it is on the map. Avdika is a strategic town. It's come under attack at least 40 times this week alone. Ukraine says that Russia is trying to encircle and capture the town. Another flashpoint is this one, Kupyansk. It is in the Kharkiv region. Here's the map. As Russia ramps up its attack, Ukraine's counteroffensive has barely made any progress. No major town has been recaptured. In an interview to British media, Ukraine's top general, Valery Zhazhuzny, said that Ukraine would need new technology and larger army reserves. The West continues to supply weapons to Ukraine, but Kiev is burning through it at an unimaginable speed. There is frustration on the ground. The Italian Prime Minister, Giorgia Meloni, voiced it during a hoax call from two Russian pranksters, Bovan and Lexus. Menoli told them, and I quote, I see there is a lot of fatigue, if I have to say the truth, from all the sides. We are near the moment in which everybody understands that we need a way out. The counter-offensive in Ukraine is maybe not going as they were expecting, unquote. In the U.S., the Biden administration is making appeals to Congress, trying to get its approval on billions of dollars in packages for Ukraine and for Israel. Earlier this week, America's Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin said, and I'm quoting again, I can guarantee that without our support, Putin will be successful. So, it seems very clear that there are wars taking place on two big fronts, Israel and Gaza and Russia and Ukraine. And the question is, does the West and the US have the stomach to continue to support two allies in different parts of the world, and both of them conflicts that could be expensive and prolonged. One thing I can say for certain, whether you're looking at Israel or whether you're looking at Ukraine, it is a prolonged conflict that we're going to be seeing.